Hi there, welcome to Mr. Morgan's Math Help for Algebra 1, Unit 1 on Sequences. This is Lesson 9 called Geometric Meanies. All right, so again, hopefully you've done your homework to start off your lesson. All right, and that you're here just to check your understanding to see are you getting it right? Are you understanding things? And if you haven't, I'd recommend do the homework first. Give it a try. See if it's making sense. You're not kind of a video like this when it's time for your test coming up in a few days, okay? So here we go. Let's take a look. For each set of sequences, find the first five terms. Then compare the growth of the arithmetic sequence and the geometric sequence. Which grows faster and when? All right, so we're going to find the first five terms. We're going to put that into our little table and do some comparisons. So for the first one, we have an arithmetic sequence of f of one is three. So when f is one, then our first value is three. And the common difference is gonna be two. So we're adding two each time. So three plus two is five, five plus two is seven, seven plus two is nine, and nine plus two is 11. The geometric sequence when g is one, the value is three, the same thing, but this is a ratio of two. A ratio of two means we're multiplying by two. So three times two is six, six times two is 12, 12 times two is 24, and 24 times two is 48. Now the first question here then says, which value will be greater, F of 100 or G of 100? So if you went and kept on going down and filled this out for number 100, which number would be the greater number is what they're asking us here. Well, based upon what we would see, I would go with the G of 100 is gonna be greater. Now the reason for that, okay, is gonna be because we're multiplying, right? We have a common ratio. And because we're dealing with a common ratio, it is multiplying faster than the common difference. Okay, so common ratio, because multiplying is gonna be growing faster than the common difference, which is just adding. That makes sense, okay? All right, let's take a look at the next one. Here we have this one here. We have when f of n equals four plus n minus one, oops, too far. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna look at plugging in some values here. We can see a couple things here. Um, first of all, if we think back to what we did in our last lesson, this term here becomes our first term, our first term. So we're gonna put a four right there. This term, we said before, was our rate of change. We're adding 10. So we're gonna add 10 to this one to have 14, 10 more is 24, 10 more is 34, and 10 more is 44. Okay, so we're in good shape there. <coughs> For the next one, what we see is that we have our, uh, our, our geometric sequence here is 256 times a half times n. If you're not sure where to start with this one, we could just put the number one in the formula for one there and see what we come up with. Well, one half to the first power, it's just gonna be one half. So 256 times a half is equal to 128. So G of one, G of one is equal to 128. Now from there, we know that our rate of change is times a half times a half. So half of 128 is 64, half of 64 is 32, half of 32 is 16, and half of 16 is going to be eight. So if this was to continue and you went all the way down to 100 and plugged in your terms, which one would be greater? Well, based upon what we see, the geometric sequence is decreasing the further along we go, whereas the arithmetic sequence is increasing the further along we go, right? We're getting larger. So we would say that f of 100 
is going to be the large one because it has a, um, a positive common difference that's greater than the fractional ratio, right? This fractional ratio there of a half, it's a fraction, is going to keep making this side less and less and less. It'll never get down to zero. It'll get smaller and smaller, but eventually becomes less, right? If you think about it, it goes eight, and then to four, then to two, then to one. Then it becomes a half, and then it becomes a fourth. Like It's never going to get zero. It's going to get itty bitty bitty. <laughs> All right, number three. All right, for f of one equals 200, f of one is 200. Arithmetic, what we're doing is we're going to take the prior term, and we're going to add 10. So 200 plus 10 plus 10 plus 10 plus 10. And for the geometric, g of 1 is equal to 4. And we can see what we're doing with this one here is we're multiplying by 2. So times 2 is 8, times 2 is 16, times 2 is 32, and times 2 is 64. Which one's going to be greater, f of 100 or g at 100? We're going to go ahead and say g at 100 is going to be greater. And again, like the first problem, it's growing by a greater common ratio than, right, common ratio is greater than the common difference. So the common ratio is greater than the common difference. All right, next one. All right, for this one, we don't have values given for one, so we could do a couple things here. We can notice that this is probably gonna be the first term, and that becomes our rate of change, All right? That's probably what that means. So our first term is gonna be 100. Our rate of change is minus 10, so we're decreasing by 10, so we're gonna go 90, 80, 70, 60. For the next one, what we see here with this one here is, okay, a couple things. We can say, well, we seem to be increasing. Um, it's like if you were to make a table, remember, the way the table works here, it's gonna have one, and then we have one times three, and one times three times three. That becomes our multiplier there, multiplying by three. But let's just plug a value in real quick here. Let's do g of one. What is g of one? Well, it'll be one times three to the first power. So one times three is simply three. So we're gonna start at three for the geometric one. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna multiply by three, okay? So three times three is nine, times three is 27, times three is 81, times three is 243. So both of these are definitely increasing, right? It's going up, it's going up. But again, because we're talking about a greater common ratio in the G, the G sequence, the geometric sequence, that's going to be the greater value at G equals 100, okay? Oh, sorry, I said that's going up. This one's actually going down. My apologies. We're decreasing, so there's no way it's ever going to be bigger. So sorry about that. If you caught that, good job. <laughs> All right, number five. Okay, F of 1 is 128. Common difference is minus 2. So I'm decreasing by 2 all the way down. And for this one, I g of 1 is 128. And my ratio is a half, which means it's becoming half the size each time. So 128 times a half is going to be 64. And then times a half becomes 32, right? So this is all times a half, where this is minus 2. So 16 and then eight. Okay, now when you get to a F of 100 or G of 100, the thing is this is gonna continue to go less and less, right? We're gonna go 118 and so on and so forth. But at some point, you actually can cross a zero and you can get negative two and negative four and so on. Whereas this one, the further you go down like we saw earlier, you could get to a half and then you can get to a fourth and then you can get to a 16th you're never actually gonna hit zero, okay? So this thing is always gonna be greater than zero where this one could actually have a negative answer. So because it's always gonna be greater, G of 100 is actually gonna be greater than F of 100 because this answer can become negative 
and this one will always be greater than zero. It's a little bit interesting there to think about, but that's how that works. All right, number six. Considering arithmetic and geometric sequences, would there ever be a time that a geometric sequence does not outgrow an arithmetic sequence in the long run as the number of terms and sequences becomes really large? Okay, is there ever a time when it wouldn't? Well, of course, right? Think of it this way. There's going to be a time, and the reason we'd say yes is if the arithmetic sequence is increasing, let's say it's plus 2, okay? and the geometric sequence is decreasing, say it's times a half. This one's going to continue to grow while this one continues to become less. Even though it won't be, it'll always be greater than zero, it could get really small. It can get really small, and this one could continue to grow. So yes, it's very possible for an arithmetic to outgrow the geometric if it's already going to be an increase there. All right, number seven. In this section here, it says each given table represents a geometric sequence. So we're talking about multiplying things. We're going to find the missing term and create the explicit and recursive equations. All right, so I'm going to multiply something to get there and then something to get there. Okay, so how would we do this here? Well, a couple of things we could think about. I could maybe do some patterns or I can just do some kind of, kind of guessing. If I multiply by, let's start with multiply by 2, just kind of guess and check. I multiply by 2, I'd have 10, and 10 times 2 is 20. That seems to work. So we can see that we're multiplying by 2. For my recursive formula, we would say f of n is going to be equal to the previous term, f of n minus 1, times 2. And that works when f of 1 equals 5. For my explicit equation, okay, we can say that f of n is equal to the first term, which is 5, times our rate of change to the n minus 1 power. Okay? So that's what we have right there. All right. So that's going to work for us. No problem. Let's look at number 7. Number 8, sorry. <laughs> All right. So we're going to go there, and we're going to go there, and then we're going to go there. Well, thinking about options, if I did times 2, I'm going to have 4 and then 8, and that's not big enough. If I did times 4, I'm going to have 8 and 16 and not big enough. And if I did times 6, I could have 12, and then 12, uh, wait, 12, 4, I'm looking at here, sorry, 2, 4, 8, Hmm. Um, yeah, sorry, I'm looking at my notes going, what, I, what am I thinking? If I do times 6, I get 12, and then 12 times 6 in this case here is going to be 12 carry the 1, 92, and then 92 times 6, 12, 54, 55, 552. That's a little big. Um, but 16 times 4, sorry, times 4, <laughs> is going to actually be, in this case here, Let's see, 8 times 4. Sorry, that's why I messed up. Back it up a little bit. Let's back it up. That's what happens when you just look at your notes and aren't like actually paying attention to what you're doing. Let's back this up right here. So sorry about that. Multiply by 4. Then 2 times 4 is 8. 8 times 4, sorry, is 32. And 32 times 4 is 128. So we're going to go with 8, 32 and recognize that what we're doing is we're multiplying by four. Sorry, messed that one up big time. So for our explicit equation, what we could say is we could say that f of n is equal to our starting term two times that rate of change to the n minus one power. Our recursive would say that f of n is equal to the previous term times our rate of change times 2 when f of 1 equals 2. Okay, number 9. Again, I would recommend just kind of just guessing. There might be a better way, but I think just guess and check probably works the best, okay? 
So I know if I did three times, uh, if I did times three, then I'm gonna be at nine, and then nine times three is 27. I'm trying to get to 108, doesn't work. If I did times uh, four, I'm gonna be three times four is 12, 12 times three is 36, not enough. Times five, I get 15, times three is 45, not enough. Times six, we get 18, and 18 times three is 108. So I can see that it's gonna be times six. So I have 18 there, and then I'll do 108 times uh, six as well, and that gives me 648. So a little guess and check, doesn't hurt, got times six, so we're multiplying by six. So for our explicit equation, we would say f, and in, f of n is equal to, in this case here, our first term, three, right? times our rate of change, which is six to the n minus one power. For our recursive, we'll say f of n is equal to f of n minus one times our rate of change, which is six. And this works when f of one equals three. All right, getting close to the end here. All right, so for the next one, trying to get from seven to 112. So let's just try some basic ones. Let's just do a times two to see what we have. We have 14, 28, 56, and what do you know, 112. That's fortunate, so I like that, times two. So explicit equation, f of n, is gonna equal, and what's it gonna equal once again? It's gonna equal our starting value, seven, times the rate of change to the n minus one power. Our recursive is gonna be f of n equals our previous term times our rate of change, which works when f of one equals seven. All right. Use the given information to write explicit equations for each geometric sequence. All right, so we wanna write an explicit equation for each sequence. All right, so for the first one, we have a starting value of 13 and a ratio of four. So we can say that f of n equals the starting value times the ratio n minus one. All right, for number 12, we have with us here, f of one is seven, and we have this information. We have f of n equals 1.05 f to the n minus, n minus one. So this is our starting value and our rate of change. So we would say f of n equals our starting value times 1.05 to the n minus one power. All right, and number 13. Again, they gave us our starting point there. So we'll say f of n equals 7 thirds times, and there's our rate of change right there, six to the n minus one power. Which of the geometric sequences in problems 11 and 13 has the greatest value at f of 100? Which one has the greatest value? Okay, well, let's think about this one. The greatest value, we're looking at what they're multiplying by. Here, I'm gonna be multiplying by one, here by four, in here by six. I know they have a different number in front, but as time goes on, that number you're multiplying by becomes a big factor. So we would definitely go with this one, number 13, is gonna have the greatest value because it has the greatest common ratio. Okay, that's it for today in lesson nine. Hope that makes some sense to you and hope you're kind of starting to understand this. One more lesson to go in this unit. Thanks for being here and tell your friends and uh, have a great day. See you next time.